Hi, my name is Alexander Mihailovich. This is my technical project on personal flight for GIT 335 Computer System Technologies. Uh, I'd like to start off just by going over uh, conventional means uh, and what necessarily I'm talking about in general. Uh, so what I chose to focus on for my technical project is the new advent of personal flight machines. Uh, so human flight, things like jetpacks, hoverboards, uh, Marty McFly uh, type stuff. Uh, but in order to really get a grips on uh, how that is going as an industry, it's also important to take a look at uh, how you know personal flight has taken hold in the past. Uh, before me, I have uh, some examples here. There's a glider, uh, ultralights, uh, a gyroscope, or not, not a gyrocopter, excuse me, and a paramotor. Uh, all of these are examples of uh, current um, conventional. Uh, personal travel. Uh, they're all regulated, or at least have regulations uh, set down, um, and uh, they're pretty tried and true. Uh, people are very, you know, comfortable with these. Uh, it's a little bit more uncomfortable uh, would be human flight. Uh, I think most notably, or or, nor or notoriously, would be uh, the fixed wing uh, pilot you see in front of you here. Um, this this gentleman. Eh, is able to uh, fly at least over the English Channel um, and uh, is assisted um, by a helicopter or other means uh, to uh, gain altitude, uh, but then subsequently uh, is able to actually fly on his own. Uh, there also is um, other types of personal flight machines besides this, besides this fixed wing uh, jet pack. Uh, there's also uh, just a regular run of the old mill jet pack. Uh, there's also uh, other jet packs that have um, secondary thrusters. Uh, there are also uh, hoverboards um, where they're using um, air rotors instead of um, turbines or jet jet engines. Um, and uh, really, you know, besides those, um, there are some other larger ones, uh, hover bikes. Um, where they're using very large, um, uh, very large fans uh, in order to gain lift. Uh, but moving further here, uh, really, there's some serious logistics uh, to getting something like human flight to work. Uh, the biggest would be weight to lift ratio. Uh, only up until recently, we even had the technology or capability. Uh, in a small form factor to actually combat um, or overcome this. Uh, this challenge. Uh, I think um, right now, or at least a year ago, uh, 2016, uh, um, as recently, they were able to get at least 10 minutes of flight out of uh, a jet pack. Uh, so that's where we're at now, uh, but you know, overcoming the weight to lift ratio in general just says a lot. Uh, another logistical problem uh, is on a psychological side where um, things like personal flight machines have been around for a while uh, in science fiction. Uh, even though they haven't necessarily um, existed in real life, we have, we have this idea of them uh, around. So um, it's really trying to uh, meet um, you know, the expectation of science fiction with the work in progress that is reality. Uh, another big logistical factor in uh, getting this um, uh, technical field pushed further would be funding. Um, most recently for jetpacks or um, in general uh, human flight systems, it's been um, really uh, crowdsourcing and um, you know, cooperative uh, corporates. Um, so what that basically means is not only is there some crowdsourcing going on where you know the masses of people are coming together and saying that we want jetpacks, uh, but there's also we do also see a uh, um, a resurgence of uh, companies also being interested in uh, these uh, human flight uh, options. Um, there's also um, implementation as far as uh, that goes. Um, it's a bit hard to read here. Um, but there is a commercial impl implementation. So uh, really the biggest driving factor right now would be Uber. Uh, at this very moment, they have VTOL, um, ver vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, flying alternatives um, or taxi systems uh, operating in Dubai um, in the Middle East. Uh, so that is um, something that's, you know, 
uh, in practice today, uh, not necessarily um, in the U.S., uh, but in practice. Um, and uh, moreover, besides uh, the application of uh, commercialization, uh, where you are trying to decongest the transportation system uh, from a taxi point of view, uh, the other applications um, are, are really quite astounding. Uh, there's um, really a large precedent for surveying, uh, getting to um, remote areas that uh, you would otherwise not be able to with fixed wing fight of fixed wing flight. Uh, there's also military applications, uh, as with many things. Um, there's also space exploration uh, as well. Um, so. Um, Really, space exploration can addition, can help uh, our astronauts um, up in low Earth orbit, uh, and um, you know moving further um, uh, going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, uh, what's really uh, the cutting edge um, at this time? Uh, well, I would say the best in field again would be Jetman. Uh, he's got the fixed wing um, jet. Uh, he's been most successful, um, flown the furthest. Um, but does cost a pretty penny. Uh, I would also say the Flyboard, uh, Flyboard Air specifically, does cost a pretty pretty, pretty penny as well. Uh, a bit less, $250,000, uh, but this, um, this hoverboard, uh, jet, turbine hover, jet turbine hoverboard, um, also um, is available and works now. It's gone up to a hundred. Uh, it's gone up to 150 uh, kilometers an hour. Uh, it's reached up to 10,000 feet. Um, and again, like I said before, it's got the 10 minutes of autonomy or 10 minutes of flying. Um, other than um, the uh, VTOL platforms that uh, Uber uses, they also, I believe, are working on uh, other turbo reactors. So those are the, uh, the small form factor um, jet turbines. And um, really, all these are still in testing. Um, so the forerunners are definitely going to be the fixed wing and uh, the actual hoverboard. Um, so the jetpack, I would say fixed wing is the most prevalent. Going further, I would say in the advent of hoverboards that the flyboard air would be the most sophisticated so far. Um, and in the way of really uh, commercializing this um, or using it in any case um, substantially uh, would be uh, the Uber uh, or Sky Uber as they are calling it. Uh, that would probably be the most significant. Um, so besides these, um, it's DIY. Um, people in their backyards um, just getting out there and uh, creating stuff. Uh, there was a YouTuber by the name of Colin Furs uh, who was actually able to take uh, two rotors from a um, uh, two 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 rotors um, rotating um, engines um, off of speed boats, um, the large fan speed boats, and was actually able to achieve lift. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, there's also a Richard Richard Browning. Um, most recently, he's able to uh, get off the ground with a virtual uh, Iron Man suit. Uh, it's really quite astounding uh, what this gentleman has been able to accomplish on his own in his own time. Uh, Omni Hoverboards is also a startup uh, that's had a lot of success um, in uh, the personal flight uh, area. Uh, I would also say the same for Arca Space. Uh, they're also doing some great stuff. Uh, their hoverboard is uh, coming along together, uh, although uh, it costs considerably less um, at um, what they are guessing at is $14,900. Um, so uh, that is one thing that I saw is a very large discrepancy between uh, what I saw the DIY uh, side of it um, as far as funding logistically uh, and the commercial. It was very interesting to me to see um, you know, how much money these companies are really pouring into this field um, and uh, how much people are really, you know, willing to take out of their own time. Um, so what are the uh, ramifications or impacts of uh, this new technology? Um, well, really, it's the continuation of flight. Um, um, and, and it's going to have to um, it's going to have to have us go through a, a whole new reimagining of transportation in my eyes. 
Um, of course, we always are going to get from one place to another, but as far as how we do that, um, what roads we take, um, you know, what roads we've paved, um, it's going to require us to remap some of our inner cities. Uh, it's going to require new architecture to be built into um, to be built into our buildings in order to you know accommodate this or, or take advantage of these new uh, human flight systems. Uh, there'll also be new codes. Um, in the beginning of the video, I mentioned with some of the uh, consistent uh, personal flights uh, that we have so far that there are already federal regulations. Uh, well, one very large thing, um, and uh, uh, really, that really for paramotors, um, you know, things that are conventional flight, uh, they don't even really have codes for those. Um, so truly. Human flight is, is in an area that's gray. Uh, and uh, I would say because of that, uh, really, uh, this is going to allude to uh, the creation of a new license in general. So, uh, hey, maybe in the future, uh, you know, you'll when you're 16, you go out and you get your hoverboard license. I don't know. Um, so what are the motivations to do this? Um, really, there's uh, decongested transportation would be the uh, forefront. Uh, so just imagine not uh, no gridlock or anything. Everyone's just flying everywhere in their own little jetpack systems. Um, we have a better burn. Uh, we're least wasting less um, uh, energy because we're only transporting ourselves. Um, but also access accessibility. Um, really, accessibility just means able to get somewhere uh, or able to access. Uh, sometimes with cars, it's difficult to do that because... We're having to bring an entire car with us. Well, now we've only got uh, a backpack. Uh, diversity is also a big one. Um, so not only are we going to continue to have the conventional means of personal flight, uh, like paramotors or gliders, um, but uh, and cars as well, uh, but we'll also continue. We'll also have the human flight capabilities. So. Uh, it's defer It's not only decongesting the transportation system, but diversifying it so that uh, more people can get to where they're going quicker. Uh, we can just use the best practices we have available. Uh, there's also a, a commercial and residential uh, monetary drive. Uh, so people are pouring money into this. Uh, people do want jetpacks. People want that sci-fi that they grew up with. Um, and, um, and the roads are getting uh, congested. Uh, I believe... Um, by 2020, it stated uh, in one of the papers I was researching that um, uh, in L.A., the uh, I believe they said, yes, in L.A., the rush hour is going to stop to a crawl of 15 um, hours for someone to get uh, across L.A. through a rush hour. Uh, this is something that would be completely cut um, to down to 15 minutes uh, with the advent of jackpacks. Um where you're at a, an area where you obviously have a centralized, um, a centralized infrastructure to maintain uh, something like these personal devices, um, and and that in, lack of infrastructure really again uh, goes back to the lack of regulations where people really just have not taken the time to um, look at what uh, these people are doing on a large whole and and kind of um, orchestrate it into our system. Uh, so for the future. Um, really, it's just seeing these technologies advance further and further, um, seeing the, um, the, uh, the engines that they uh, employ uh, getting more efficient, uh, the burning of the fuel getting more efficient, uh, the continual backing. Uh, really, I just see this to, I really see this continuing um, and, and truly just being a streamline of the flight systems. Uh, so on the whole, uh, really, we have uh, conventional um, uh personal transportation uh, that we've had for a while, um, but uh, it does seem that um, from a technical aspect, we are moving into a uh, personal flight era or a human flight era where it is just a human body flying. Uh, it's not something that we have a lot of regulations on, but there are a lot of people who have already been doing it. Uh, there are jetpacks, hoverboards, um, fixed wing jetpacks, uh, hover bikes, uh, and everyone's working on it from Uber uh, to your next door neighbor in their backyard on their DIY project. Uh, going through to the future, uh, this, this, these types of technologies are going to help us decongest our 
uh, road systems. They're going to help us um, be more efficient with how we get around. Uh, they're going to help us waste less time. Um, and, uh, and yeah, jetpacks are just pretty awesome, I would say. Uh, so thank you so much for listening to me here. Um, this is my Works Cited page. Uh, these are all of the uh, images I used uh, in order here. Uh, these are some of the scholarly journals that I took from. Uh, these videos here, uh, or these links, I should say, um, are also very uh, uh, very useful. Uh, they go to some of the websites. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you.